Hello and welcome to this video. So you'll know by the title that we're going to look at calculating the Bollinger or Bollinger Bands Indicator on our data. To make a start, we've got yet another notebook, uh, candle underscore indicators .ipynb. You'll find it on GitHub, of course. I've started off already by importing what we did for the candle patterns. We've got the plot candles exactly copied over from the candle patterns. We'll probably change this DF markers in a bit. And then just loading up the US dollar Japanese yen for our uh, got the columns, slimmed everything down so we have this DF data frame here ready to use. So going to Investopedia, I found a definition of what this uh, Bollinger Band actually is. There's lots of information about the uh, indicator here, but we're just interested in how it's calculated. So here's the, the main part of the formula. These things always look a lot more complicated than they are. Um, so we've got an upper and a lower where it says that yeah, the BOLU is the upper, the BOLD is the low and lower band. MA is a moving average, so we've got a moving average here. TP is the typical price, so we've got the high plus the low plus the close divided by three. And N is the number of days smoothing. So here we've got the upper is the moving average of this typical price smoothed over N, which is usually 20, so we'll use 20. And then we add and subtract something from this. And this is M, so the number of standard deviations, typically two, so M will be two in our case, multiplied by, and that looks like the standard deviation of the typical price over 20 periods as well. In fact, that's what it says right here. Okay, so fairly simple stuff. And once you've done that, you get a chart, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So if I just zoom on the image a little bit, you'll see that we have the moving average down the middle, the upper and lower lines, which are this two standard deviation. And I think the strategy here is, is that if a candle breaks the upper or the lower, then you trade in the opposite direction. Of course, you're now able to assess the effectiveness of this over lots and lots of data in a long period and decide for yourselves whether it's any good or not. So back in the code, let's set about calculating our Bollinger Bands. So the first thing we need is we need this uh, typical price. So we're going to type DFTP is equal to DF mid H plus mid L plus mid C and divide that by three. And now we've seen in the moving average videos a long, long time ago, it seems, but we've seen there how to calculate a moving average over a given period. So we'll do that now on the TP. So we'll say DF MATP is equal to DF .tp .rolling window equals 20 dot mean. Likewise, we need the standard deviation as well. So I'm just going to copy this line for the standard deviation. We type STD instead of mean. And here we'll type the MASTD. Oops, sorry, no, we won't. We'll type STD underscore TP. And now we need to create the upper and the lower. So we'll say DFBB upper is equal to DFMATP plus two times STD TP. And then to get the lower, it's the exact opposite. So I'll just copy that and type lower. And then we want to do minus two times the standard deviation. And then run all of that and find that I've made a typing error because I've typed an underscore there. Try that again. Okay, now we've run all that. We should actually have all the information we need to be able to plot our Bollinger Bands. So what I'd like to do is just go up into the plot candles and we're going to make some alterations here and actually try and plot these bands. So we're going to leave this DF markers and none actually, and we're going to save this for a little bit later when we identify the signals. But for now, we just want to plot the lines. So we're going to say that 4C in MATP, BB upper, BB lower, I'm just going to paste in the code here because you've seen it many times just for drawing a line on the chart. But for each of these values, C, which will be each of the three values in this list, we'll plot the data of this column with dfplot.time. We'll have a certain color there of 4290F5 and make sure the mode is lines. And that should plot the lines for us on the chart. So I'm going to execute that cell. You can find this code, by the way, on GitHub as always. So you don't need to type it all out. You can always copy it. We've seen it before. And then just drop down to the bottom here and type plot candles, DF plot. Now we don't have a DF plot and it will be nice to have a DF plot. And it's something that we've done many times before. So just above there, we'll make our DF plot. And you can see that we've created these upper, lower and moving average Bollinger Band lines. So now what I'd like to do is actually add the signal on. So we'd like the signal candle. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to say that if the candle has closed either above or below the upper or lower, that is a trade signal candle. So to do that, we're going to write a new function. So just above this load of code here, we're going to write a new function called get BB signal. And it's where we're going to take in our row. And then we've got some fairly simple logic here. So I'm just going to paste it in because I'm conscious of time and things like that. So we're going to say if row and the closed price is greater than the upper Bollinger Band, 
and the mid price close is better than the open in other words it was a green candle that closed above there then we'll return one because we have a signal that we've broken the upper bound actually I've realized that should be minus one because we've actually got a signal there where we want to return a sell not a buy in that case and likewise exactly the opposite logic so if the close price is below the lower and the close price is below the open price then we've got a signal to buy otherwise we can just return zero so the last thing remaining then is just to apply that function down here and we can use that to generate our signal one thing I'm going to do is just cut that bit out there with the raw data frame and paste it there so we do everything from new just run this cell for the function and run this one and we don't seem to have any errors and then we need to make a small adjustment to the plot above so that we can actually get our signals identified on the candles so going back up to the candle plot what we're actually going to do is we're going to delete this DF markers because we don't need it anymore and what we'll do instead is we'll say DF markers is equal to our DF plot where the signal is not equal to zero then we can delete this is not none here and just shift tab all of this back so that we're effectively recoloring the candles which have a signal on the uh, upper and lower lines so I'll just run that cell and then rerun everything and then drop down to the bottom and see if we get some colored candles for our signals and indeed you can see we do we've got some colored candles here where we break the line and also one here where we also break the line let's move on a little bit and just go 1000 to let's go 1150 and here we can see we've got a few more signal candles as well for various trades using the Bollinger Bands okay so you've seen actually how in very very little code we can actually calculate one of the more complicated looking indicators very very quickly and you've already learned in the course all of the techniques you'll need to be able to go ahead and test out this strategy and you could even put in a variety of rolling windows or standard deviations and things like this to see how good it would be trading the uh, the Bollinger Bands okay so that's it then for this video again as always any issues or questions or comments always welcome otherwise see you in the next one thanks for watching